Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Concha 4-pole trailer wiring harness on a 2023 Kia Sorento. Now adding 4-pole trailer wiring harness is a great option to any vehicle that you've installed a hitch on because if you ever plan on pulling a trailer, you're going to need this to transmit the light signals from your vehicle to the trailer and that's going to include your running lights, your turn signals, as well as your brake lights. And this kit's really nice because it plugs into your factory style plugs behind the taillights and then really all you have to do is kind of get everything mounted up, run a power wire to 12 volt power from the battery and that's really about it. It also has a module and an inline fuse, so if you ever have a back feed from either your trailer or a short in your car, it's not gonna damage any of the factory electronics. Overall, this is a pretty easy installation because it is pretty well plug into the taillights. Now you are gonna have to connect a few butt connectors and you might need a heat shrink gun or a heat gun to get your heat shrink connectors all cinched up. But other than that, you're really just running a power wire up uh, to the battery, which can get a little bit tricky, but overall this vehicle is pretty easy to do and I'm gonna walk you through all those steps. So let's take a look at that now. Now the first step to this installation is gonna be removing our taillights as we need to gain access to the plugs. And to do that, you're just gonna open up your hatch and you'll find that there's these two circular shaped plastic caps. Now there's a small little groove here that you can get a flat head screwdriver in. Um, just kind of work your way in there and you should be able to just kind of twist it and that should pop open, giving us access to either a Phillips head or a 10 millimeter screw. So whatever you have handy, you can go ahead and get those taken out. And then to get your tail light out, you're just going to kind of wiggle it back and forth. A lot of times there's going to be a clip that's kind of holding it in on the back side here. And this will kind of loosen it up and kind of give it force pulling back here. And we should be able to get this to pop out. And if you need to get a little bit more leverage, you can use a plastic trim panel tool. Kind of wedge it in here and that should allow us to get these to pop out. You can see actually the studs that it's popped into there. So that's where they go in. So if you can get something flat to just kind of pry here, uh, there's also a clip up here. So you can see if you pull straight back, that should get it out. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and just unplug our taillight. So there's this tab here, just push that up, pull that out, and then we'll just set our taillight aside and we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Now underneath on the driver's side, there's going to be a plastic panel that we're going to remove and that way we can pass everything up. We're also going to be mounting up the module portion of our wiring in here. So to get this removed, there's going to be three plastic push pins and these are pretty, to pry, uh, pretty easy to pry off. There's four slots, just choose one of them and just kind of try to get that center portion to pop out. And then normally you can get the whole thing to come out. I'm using a trim panel tool, which is really handy, but if not, uh, you can always use a flathead screwdriver and that should work as well. Now there's gonna be two plastic nuts that are up here and a lot of times you can just get these by hand. So just kind of uh, spin these counterclockwise until they both come off. Um, if it is a little bit snug, then you can use a 13 millimeter socket to also get these off. But uh, since they are plastic, sometimes it helps to pull it down as you're doing this and that way it's not working itself back up on that thread. We'll just set this aside. Now from our uh, module, we're gonna have this brown, yellow, uh, and then you'll also have white with these plugs. This is gonna be attaching to our taillight, but we do need to pass it from below. So the way that we do it here is using an airline tube. We just pass this down and that way we can tape up our wires and pull it through. Now, if you don't have an airline tube, you can kind of use anything that allows you to pass this down, a string with a nut tied to it, whatever works. But basically it just makes it a little bit easier to get your wires passed up. Now when taping this, I try to make it as uh, narrow as possible because it can be pretty tight pulling this up. So just kind of tape one portion here and then we're just gonna pull this up, maybe to help feed it from the bottom a little bit. And then once we get this pulled up, we'll just take our tape off. And these plugs match the OEM style. So pretty easy here, we're just jumpering into it. So this one looks like uh, our factory plug here, we'll just take that other end and then snap this into place. And at this point, we can go ahead and plug in our taillight. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead 
I'm gonna leave this loose um, because we will mount this up, but we wanna make sure that we have our wire ran over and all the slack pulled out. So you can start routing your four pole to exactly where you want it to be. Um, now it does have the molded in dust cap, so kind of uh, using the hitch to mount it up, you can store it here just by capping it up and that's pretty normal. We're actually gonna be using a, an extended bracket and a four pole mounting bracket that you can pick up here for a nice solid mount. It is not necessary, but it does add a nice little uh, you know, permanent mount there. And as far as routing your wires, um, try to keep it tucked up in the rear fascia kind of bumper support. You can also use the hitch, but just zip tie it up. And when you get over to this side, make sure that you're not gonna make contact with the exhaust. And then I've just ran my fish wire down here where we're gonna pull this up and attach it to our taillights just like we did on the driver's side. So I've routed my wiring over to my passenger side as well as my four pole. And I'll show you how that looks underneath. I just kind of went ahead and used the factory wire loom that's up there and just zip tied it up a few spots and that way it's going to be nice and protected and then pulled it up and plugged it into our taillights. So I went ahead and pulled out the rest of the slack so we have it here that we can bundle up later but we do need to mount up our module, our ground wire and before that I'm going to go ahead and make my attachment to the power wire that way it's nice and easy to make my connection right here rather when it's tucked up. Go ahead and grab your black wire. You can see that it's already been pre-stripped and we'll take the included heat shrink butt connectors, which is a nice addition to this kit. And we're gonna crimp down this one side. And you can go ahead and grab your black spool of wire that comes in the kit. And that's gonna be our power wire that runs up to the battery. So we'll make our connection here. We'll strip this back. And then we can crimp this down. Then you're going to want to use a heat gun and what that's going to do is cinch down the, uh, these ends here and since this wiring does live on the outside of the vehicle it's going to keep it nice and protected from any water damage from occurring and it's going to be a nice watertight seal so heat this up until it shrinks around the wire. Now we'll go ahead and with the included self-tapping screw we're going to get our ground wire mounted up. Now there is a portion that sits more flush than the other side. Have that face the metal so it has a nice contact patch here. And I'm just gonna take an impact. And this is gonna be a fine spot for it. It's gonna be part of the chassis that's raw metal. So it'll be a good grounding spot. And just make sure that it's tight enough for the ring terminal to not spin around. You don't need to go any tighter than that because it can strip it out and then you don't have a solid contact point now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get all my wires kind of bundled up. And as far as getting the module mounted up, there is double-sided tape, which you can stick to any flat surface, really. Um, I also, there's a hole here. I like to um, put a zip tie and just kind of bundle it around some of the factory wire loom. So that way, if that adhesive ever becomes not as sticky as it used to be, it's still gonna be attached. So I've gone ahead and I've zip tied it up here as well as kind of bundled my wires up and zip tied it here. So this is going to be a nice solid point. And also you have that cover that's going to go here to help protect it from any elements as well, which we can go ahead and put that up now. Um, now your power wire that we attach to the black wire, I'm going to start running this up to the battery and I'll show you how that looks. Now to run the power wire up to the battery, our main concerns are going to be keeping it away from anything hot or moving. So any suspension, um, so I ran it up here over our rear cross member and then just kind of made my way over and using some of the factory um, hard line clips, I routed it through there. That way I could zip tie it up. You want to make sure you're not zip tying it onto hard lines, but those plastic clips work really well. And at this point, I've actually tucked it in our underbody panel and that's going to make it nice and easy and protected all the way up until we get to the tunnel of the engine bay where I've routed our fish wire down, I've taped our wire up, and that way we can pull it up to our engine bay. And we're obviously gonna have a little bit of extra here and we're also gonna be putting in our inline fuse holder. So we'll go ahead and determine exactly where we're gonna attach this. Um, so here's our positive battery terminal. We have a bunch of different spots here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get mine kind of routed over here. And so I'm gonna put my fuse line, fuse holder kind of about here. So I'll cut off my excess. And your fuse holder's in a loop. You can cut it kind of wherever, it doesn't matter. 
And we'll just strip back both ends here. Then we'll take our included heat shrink butt connector and get this attached. And also on this end um, of our fuse holder, we're also going to use the included ring terminal. And that way we can attach it to our battery post. So I'll just get my heat gun and get this shrink down before attaching. So we'll go ahead and uh, any of these will give us 12 volt power. So just go ahead and loosen up whichever one you want. And it's important to not have your fuse in until you make it all connected. You don't want power surging through it. Um, that fuse is going to prevent that from happening. So we'll get this attached here. We might need to make a small notch here. Uh, this might close. It's pretty close here. So I'm just going to cut just a tiny little slit. That way this can still close over our wire. So I'll go ahead and get this tightened down first. Now we can go ahead and get our fuse in place. And cap that up. Now if you want to, you can go ahead and zip tie this up as well. Um, and really all that's left to do is test to make sure that it's working before hitting the road. So now we'll just run through our light sequence and we're using a four pole tester. Uh, now if you don't have one of these at home, you can pick one up at e-trailer or you can hook it up to your trailer and has someone check the lights on the trailer as you run through it on your vehicle. So starting off, we'll go ahead with our running lights. Next, we'll do our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. Now that we've tested and everything's working properly, we can go ahead and cap this up until the next time we need to use it. That was a look at installation of the Takancha four-pole trailer wiring harness on a 2023 Kia Sorento.